Thank you, Chris, for the reading. Good morning, everyone. So officially, I'm the only one who's allowed to smile in this room because, <laughs> but you can smile, but I can't see it. But what you can do maybe is, at least maybe nod, or oh, shake your head. Like, mm -mm. That way we know we are, we are together. <laughs> Not leave fast. <laughs> it's an honor to stand before you this morning and share the word of God. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Perish. I know it's a funny name and a funny surname, but they're both mine. <laughs> and before I start, I just want to say thank you to, to everyone. Uh, I got an opportunity to go home uh, a few weeks ago to meet my, my son. Wow, it was, it was amazing. Uh, Rose wasn't expecting me there, so it was a big surprise for her. And yeah, we really had a good time. And I'm, I'm happy to be back to share the word of God. So, Let's dig into it. So in the past few weeks, so in the first past few weeks, uh, Pastor Chris has been taking us on a journey through the book of, of Mark. And through this journey, we have seen a trial of what Jesus was trying to do, uh, reveal himself to the people, to reveal himself to Israel, to his disciples. And as the journey was unfolding, we start to see uh, the things that people were picking up. For example, uh, now we, we are seeing that the people, like the, uh, the Jews, were seeing Jesus as a healer. He was more like the guy who takes care of their physical needs. Because when they recognize him coming to Knesset, the first thing they do is to run and get all the sick to him. You know? And in every village, every town that he was going through, he was healing them and they were getting healed. And a few verses before, we see uh, him feeding 5,000 people, you know. And so the people have come to a conclusion like this guy is here for, for our physical needs. So whenever we see him, what do we do? We take the sick to him. We take the unwell to him and they will be healed, you know. So this is the pattern that we see that is coming from the people because of their behavior. Then also, they are, they are the Pharisees now, and these guys had made their own conclusion when it comes to elements of purity. They said, you know what? It's how do I stand right before God? And they've put these traditions in place. And these were the things that they were living by. So if when you look uh, on, on from verse seven now, from, from chapter seven, when the Pharisees saw that the disciples of Jesus were eating with unclean hands, defiled hands, they, they were furious. How could they? So these hands, it's not, they are not unclean in terms of their dirty or muddy or anything. They are unclean because they have not been ceremonially washed. They, they didn't do the ritual of cleaning the hands. So this thing of washing their hands was handed down, uh, some would say, as far as, as King Solomon, he's the one who, who established it in that. He realized that when the priests were going into uh, to the temple, when they were sharing the bread of the presence and eating, sometimes they would have hands, they were outside finishing with people. Now they just get inside and they start breaking this bread and they're eating with dirty hands. So they had to find a way to say, you know what, at least clean your hands first before you start breaking this bread. You know. So as time went on, this tradition was passed and passed and passed to the point that it became like a law, you know, to the Jews that if you then start eating without ceremonially washing, not the washing of you going to a bathroom, you use the bathroom, now you need to wash your hands because they are dirty. No, it was a matter of ceremony. It was like a ritual. So as you are cleaning now at this stage, you had to be chanting. So you, you start, there was a cup which had uh, two arms. So you had to start with your right hand, uh, pour, it, pour water twice on it, your left hand, pour water twice on it, and that makes you clean. So this is what the disciples were not doing, and the Jews, the Pharisees were observing this thing, and like, one, these people call themselves followers of God, and they are not washing them, their hands before they clean. How is that? You know, so they came to Jesus and said, why are your disciples not following in the tradition of the elders, 
mark that with the tradition of the elders, not the commandment of Moses. At this point, Israel was still under the commandment of Moses. But for the Jew, for the Pharisees, it was not the commandment of Moses that they hold high or they looked up to. It was the tradition of the elders. And I'm sure at this point, Jesus would maybe make that, that funny laugh like, oh, shake his head. Wow, these people are so ignorant. They are so ignorant because they are not focusing on the problem. And right there, he points at their problem using, the, using Isaiah 29, 13. Where is their problem? The problem is their heart. So he says to them, Isaiah did well to prophesy of your hypocrisy. For it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They had come to conclude that for me to stand righteous, for me to stand purified before God, I had to do this and that and this and that. And all those this and that is not anything that God had commanded. It was their own tradition that they have handed over. I'm sure for us as a church, we can just say, saying, okay, let's, let's have like a, a Sunday afternoon hike after church. So everyone, uh, let's do that. So every Sunday after church, we go and hike different places. And on and on, this goes on for a while to the point that we come to see it as a requisite to be part of the family, to the point that if you start missing the Sunday hikes, we are looking at you funny like, hmm, there's something wrong with your Christianity. Why are you missing this special thing? So as time goes on, this becomes tradition to the point that if you are going to be part of Hope Central, if you miss the Sunday hikes, then you need salvation. You know, this is exactly what the Jews were doing. And to the, to the point that they really lost the focus of, of, of their worship, how they worship God and, and how, why. Are we, are, we, are we together here? So tradition, and, and Jesus is straight on with these guys, that you have lost the point of what it is to be a Jew, because now you have left the commandments of God and you hold the tradition of men. And guess what? They were even better at evading the law the law of God. They were quite well, they've perfected the art of running away from the law of God and establishing their, their own tradition. To the point that the fifth commandment, honor your mother and father. Simple commandment, and it even has a condition, a, a blessing to it. If you do that, most probably you're gonna get to 150 years, <laughs> you know, because you're following that. But what do they do to avoid that? They go around and say, you know what? There is a clause that says, if you put aside your property and say, this is a gift to God, then because it's a gift to God, how can you give your gift to God to your mother or father? You can't do that, that's, that's wrong. You cannot take what belongs to God and give it to a man. So now they could evade taking care of their parents because this was set aside for God. That was just one example that Jesus gave, but he said, and many more other things. I'm sure we can spend the whole day trying to, to, to just break down the, the, the other ways they've been evading the commandments of God. So this is, this is I, don't, I, I think it's a bit scary because we can look at them and say, Jews, really? How could you do that? But at some point, us as Christians as well, we, we have got a fine way of doing this. We, we have also found our, our shortcuts into inventing the word of God. And this is the thing that Jesus is addressing to, to, to the Pharisees right now. This is the thing that he's addressing, saying, you know what? You must stop that. Why? Because, because of that, you are going astray. Your focus is no longer on the law of God. You've 
totally thrown it away and established your own, you know. You made the word of God void by your tradition. So Jesus now then turns to the people in verse, in, in verse 14. He turns to the people, he calls them and says, hear me all of you and understand. There is nothing outside of a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defiles him. So now Jesus is explaining to the people. He's, he's bringing, breaking it down now. Understand these people. There are two systems at play here. There's the digestive system and the spiritual system. And those two do not meet at all. That is simply what Jesus is saying. So when you think you have fed the digestive system, and when you think that that system is gonna uh, temper with your spiritual, you are wrong because that doesn't operate like that. Your heart, your heart. When the Bible says the heart, it's talking about the core of men, the inner you, you know, that part that you feel the void that you cannot even explain. You know, there are times where you're just feeling low. You have no idea what's going on. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Did, did you have a fight with anyone? No. So why are you low? I don't know. That inner core of the man, that is what the Bible is talking about when it says the heart, when it says the problem is your heart. When that inner core is disturbed, everything else about you is disturbed. So it's not about food. You can eat all you want. You can, I don't know, piss yourself. You can put many earrings, you can do whatever. But that is not the thing that is the problem with man. Because that is just the outside, that is just the physical. This body one day, guess what? It's going down six feet or someone choose to bend it. This is not what matters. What matters is the inner man, the heart of you. That is the problem. So as much as you can keep all these cleansing ceremonies, as much as you can have all these rituals of going to for a hike every Sunday, that is not gonna make you a better Christian. So I'm not saying hiking is bad. <laughs> Remember my example. Remember my example. <laughs> so it's the heart that is the problem. And unless you address that, unless that I address that, unless the Jew addresses his heart, no matter how much he tries to wash his hands, no matter how much he tries to wash his body, he's not going to be a better man because the problem is inside. So my spiritual system needs mending. Your spiritual system needs mending. But how? I think this is, that's the question that always troubles us. How do I mend this system? Because it's not about food. It's not about cleansing. It's not about how I dress. It's not about how I walk. It's not about anything else. This is what Jesus is saying. So what goes into me is no problem, but what comes out of me is what defiles me. For from within, out of the heart of men, listen to this, from within, out of the heart of men, comes out evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. 23, all these evil things come from within and they defile a person. That's scary, right? You're not gonna be bad because you ate a lobster. You are bad because of your heart. And that is what needs to be fixed. So 
the pattern that God, Jesus has been showing the people who then decides to conclude, I think this guy is here for our physical needs. The pattern that Jesus was showing was, look people, the problem is inside. And I'm here to heal that. As much as I can take care of your physical needs, as much as I can feed you, but I can give you more than that. I can take care of your spiritual system. That thing that matters the most than the body. The body is going to disappear one day, but the spirit stays, and that will answer. So how does one get around the problem of the heart? Romans chapter 10. I love the book of Romans. It's that one book that you can just give me everything while I'm sitting there and just tell you everything from it. It's, it's amazing. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. 8 to 11. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And for the scriptures say, for everyone who believes in him, he will, be, he will not be put to shame. You need to give your heart to the one source of life that is Jesus Christ, who is going to make sure that your spiritual system stands strong. So as you struggle every day to fall, when you are falling and you struggle to stand up, look up to heaven and say, Jesus, I give you my heart once again because the problem is my heart. The problem is not my neighbor. The problem is not my wife, the problem is not my kids. The problem is my heart. So this heart I give to you so that once again, you may purify it. You may cleanse it, that I may stand before you purified. That one day when I'm called home, I'll be ready. And I can stand before you and say, here I am, Lord, because my heart is right. So this morning, my message is the problem is your heart and the solution is Jesus. Once you do that, trust me, even when you are feeling empty, there's, there's this, this satisfaction that just comes into you when everything is turmoil, when, when there's wind around your life, when your body is being shaken, but as long as your heart is with him, Trust me, that is nothing. It's like you, you it's, 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 a, it's a hot knife on butter. It just slides. That is what your life will be like because the God we worship is a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. He's a God who will see us through each and every problem of our lives. He is faithful. He is loving. And he is saying, come to me and I'll give you rest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, just want to thank you for your message. Thank you, Lord, for helping me understand that the problem is my heart. And Lord, I surrender my heart to you this morning that you may take over and point me in the right direction. I'm trusting in you, Lord, we are trusting in you, Lord, to see us through, through the battles of life. Every day, may our heart submit to you. May we know and understand that only you are the solution to our problem. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.